Charlie, let me ask you this first because we were debating early on about the merits of having Dallas and the Lions on Thanksgiving. It's just tradition, I assume. But does the NFL lose something by not trying to find a way to get their marquee teams that are playing at a high level on that particular day? Well, I think that's why they created the third uh, game. Yeah. So that they have the ability to do that. Uh, I was uh, in the middle of this when I was in the league uh, trying to get it changed because uh, there was a significant advantage to playing on Thanksgiving Day. You had to... You had to hunt for the stats to prove it, but um, uh, because Detroit had played since the 30s, it was a traditional game, but there didn't seem to be any statistical advantage to them winning or losing. Common sense says if you're home on Thursday, you have an edge over the team that has to travel, see? But you couldn't match it statistically. Then Dallas, where it showed with Dallas, and it showed more so with Dallas because they won more than Detroit, was if you had a winning record, okay, and you were home on Thanksgiving, you won a higher percentage of games on Thanksgiving, and, the, and more importantly, the game after Thanksgiving because you had the 10-day break than you would otherwise. So, yeah, there's an advantage. So we let a fight, uh, I let a fight of people, uh, teams in the league, to get this thing changed, and we could never get it changed. So, uh, so it stayed there. It's never going to change now. But adding the third game, I think, satisfies your point, which is an excellent point. So you know, Charlie, I have our, our crack research department working on those numbers right now. Trying to find Absolutely. those stats. Absolutely, they're they're very they're very yet? busy in front of me. <laughs> so very busy, very busy. Um, did the Cleveland Browns have a bad day yesterday? Uh, yes, because one of two things: either uh, San Francisco took the quarterback they wanted, or it took an option out for their trade. Their 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 position became um, I don't know if it's devalued or not. Maybe people say maybe they got more value. Because there's only one quarterback left. Yeah. Um, but maybe the teams that wanted to trade don't want, didn't want to trade for uh, Wentz. They don't want to trade for Goff. So it's hard to say, uh, but you'd like to have both options of both quarterbacks being there for yourself and the trade. You know, I understand people that question the amount of picks that were given up for by the Rams to get up to number one. People bring up Herschel Walker. People bring up RG3. But I feel like, Charlie, when you've got – a young running back like Todd Gurley, and you have the chance to pair him with one of the marquee quarterbacks, it just makes the risk a little bit more appetizing to take. Well, it was a time, really, if you look at their franchise, they're in, they've been stuck in neutral because they didn't have a quarterback. You know, Sam Bradford just couldn't stay healthy. Yeah. Uh, but So they didn't have a quarterback. They've got a playoff defense. You like, like you said, they've got a Pro Bowl running back. They've got the parts. They're mo- they've moved to L.A. Hey. They're going to sell one year on L.A. because it's the first year, and that's the last year they'll sell because of that. L.A. is going to demand a winner. I think the Rams and the Raiders, when they left, were averaging 55000 a game. So uh, uh, it's time to go get a quarterback. It's a bold move, yes, to the overpay. Who knows whether they overpay? If the guy plays well and they go to the playoffs and they win with him, no one's going to remember what they gave up. It seems like they're, the, the social media, it, it has... It's made its declarations. Carson Wentz, definitely going number one. He's the guy. And there's Jared Goff. He's definitely going number one. He's the guy. In your opinion, has one quarterback separated himself uh, from the other? Yes, but, uh, but, but it depends on where you are standing as a franchise, okay? Goff's more ready to play right now. That's why I think that the Rams will take him. Uh, you know, Goff has uh, very good instincts, uh, pocket awareness, gets the ball out quick. Uh, those are his assets. His, his weaknesses, he does not have a big arm, and his accuracy down the field could, could be better, I think. Then, uh, you know, with Wentz, uh, Joe Flacco. I think he's a better prospect coming out of college than Joe Flacco. Why do I say Joe Flacco? Same level of competition, Delaware, North Dakota State. He's a more athletic Joe Flacco is what I look at. Uh, but he, he tends to stay on the first read too often, and he, he throws – too many fastballs, and he doesn't have enough change-ups in there when he needs it. See, his touch isn't as good all the time is what we're saying. So he's farther away. Both these guys have to adjust the calling plays in the huddle. Goff evidently did in high school, Wentz has it. So, as far as I know, anyway. Uh, so it kind of depends where your team is. Uh, if you've got a good team and you can, can work around the quarterback and like Roethlisberger and Flacco, the defense in the running game can win it for you, St. Louis might be like that. You could afford to take Wentz. If you need a guy that's got to give you a little bit quicker production, uh, Goff can do that. I think they go with Goff. He's a West. He's a West Coast guy. He's got familiarity. This team. This team's overweight now. 
I, I sense uh, it's time to move, and I think that's why they picked off. But I like Wentz overall if you got a little time to, to work with him. Good to visit with you, Charlie. I appreciate the time. Great to be with you now. That's Charlie Casserly, uh, NFL Network, longtime NFL executive uh, here on the program. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.